there's a huge effort to find biomarkers of aging, right? And this is really important. Uh, but the, the most highly prevalent feature of aging is graying of hair. So you could consider graying of hair as a biomarker of aging, right? And if, if we're impacting the aging process, we should also be impacting graying of hair. So the, uh, and facial wrinkles, right? Talking about ARDD, um, so last year, uh, uh, Morton, you, you provide a very exciting uh, presentation. Um, and uh, uh, basically what you have, sh uh, have shown, and again, uh, everyone that wants can uh, watch it in the YouTube channel of uh, the RDD, but I'm trying to summarize it. Uh, you, you started to look at a, a big population in uh, Denmark and uh, looked at uh, what features are uh, mostly prevalent with uh, aging. So can you discuss a bit about that and uh, what, what, was, what were your yeah. stories? So this, this, this is one of the things that I think where, where Denmark has a bit of an advantage. So there's been a, a, a sort of history of collecting health data over many decades. So, so we looked at health registry data um, in, in one of our projects here where we have tried to investigate um, features of, of aging based on on pathological description. So basically, what is the path pathology? And when he looks in the microscope, what does he see on the slide? He writes down. And uh, we, we have access to more than 30 million of these descriptions. And then we could run uh, um, in um, text-based analyses on these uh, natural language processing and try to identify age-associated features. Uh, and see if we can find patterns that could describe aging in a, in a sort of unbiased way. And um, so, so um, because we, we have good uh, health registries, we can also connect. We, we know actually the diagnosis of each individual that's in the database. We also know if they have died or not. We know their birth date. Um, we can also actually, and we haven't done that yet, but we could connect it with, with the, uh, with the pharma registry data. So we have more than 1.3 billion prescriptions. So, so this is a large amount of data. But, but yeah. what we found particularly in that was, which may be a little bit controversial uh, to some people, but but we we look for patterns of aging, sort of just at a very broad level and. Uh, one of the things we did see was that that there seems to be some sex specific patterns of aging. So, so um, we observed, for example, that that for women aging seems to maybe start a little bit earlier than for men, but then it goes much slower. Whereas for men, uh, it starts a little bit later, maybe around forty years of age, and then it goes more rapidly downhill. So. Uh, so uh, and and then we use those um, signatures also to identify molecules that could impact aging because we because the text based nature we could translate it into other databases. So we looked in PubMed to identify drugs that were associated with the signatures and found some drugs that could uh, could impact aging. We tested that in the lab. Excellent. And uh, going back to to that, and I want to deep deep dive into a specific point. So uh, I remember from the presentation, for example, graying, uh, uh, graying of the hair is, I don't know, uh, it's a feature that uh, the prevalence is like 99%. Uh, what are, uh, if you remember, what are the top, let's say, five features that are uh, strongly correlated with aging? Yeah, so uh, graying of hair is highly correlated muscle weakness. Um, I, can, I have to look it up, actually. Although I, I give this presentation, you know, every... Yeah, you know, I understand. Like a, once per week, but I, I never really think about reading through the, the list. But um, those are those are highly um, prevalent features, but uh, but maybe not so clinically relevant. Uh, there are other features, of course, that are that are that are more. Um, so facial wrinkles is one of the top five, also. Okay. Uh, but there are others that are more uh, serious, right? I think one of the things that people don't realize is that that 40% of everybody will get some sort of cancer diagnosis. 
So this is a really, you know, every other person basically. Yeah. And that's the same for cardiovascular disease. So, so, um, you always think that cancer is going to hit someone else. You know, I think this is sort of the common idea, but it's, it's. There are 60% chance that it will eat uh, someone else and 40% that it will eat you. Yeah. But that's a, that's still a, that's still a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Um, about uh, being seri uh, serious for a second, you said, uh, uh, muscle weakness and yep. uh, we know i think that that's very uh, relevant we yep. know that uh, we are losing uh, a, a lot of our muscle mass with the aging process so again to our viewers we discussed a lot about uh, uh, how important it is to build muscle when you are getting older and how hard there is to do it so here you have another evidence from unbiased experiment that uh, yep. Lord and his team have done that uh, Muscle building muscle is very important for you to live uh, better longer. So, so I'm excited about it. And definitely for me, the uh, graying of the hair and wrinkles is is a good control in a way because we know yeah. that someone that gets yeah. older. So, so yeah. I think that that's uh, that's yeah. definitely a good uh, positive control. Uh, uh, yeah. Pass. Uh, you, also think, may, you also you also oh, sorry you wanted to say something. I, I think it's also interesting because I mean there's a lot of. Um, there's really a lot of um, there's a huge effort to find biomarkers of aging, right? And this is really important. Uh, but the the most highly prevalent feature of aging is graying of hair. So you could consider graying of hair as a bio biomarker of aging, right? And if if we're impacting the aging process, we should also be impacting graying of hair. So the uh, and facial wrinkles, right? So so in some of the clinical trials that we run, we also use you know, facial photographs as, as a, as a biological aging clock, because it, it, it's, it also does reflect your pace of aging. And there's definitely people that age faster and people that age slower also based on, on, on how they look, their, their sort of photo, photo aging. Yeah. And again, if you will go to the LDD uh, YouTube channel and look at the mortal presentation, it started with a very nice video that show how a person uh, age, which was uh, very exciting to, to view.